Alright mug lovers, welcome to another adventure with us, the Hovercraft History Hunters. Oops, better take these sunglasses off before they hit the fan. Today we're going to explore an abandoned World War I U-boat submarine and do some mudlarking afterwards. Let's go, woohoo! Hey. I don't like the look of those dark clouds. Hovercraft aren't great in temperamental weather. Strong winds don't really agree with them. So it should get a little bit interesting later on, so hold on to your hats. So we've got a guest today with us, that's Norman there in the green and white hovercraft, that's a snapper, a single seater hovercraft, that's getting thrown about a bit today because it's quite windy and choppy out here and I think it's going to get even windier later on. That's Ben there from the British Hovercraft Company and his crew. Now who put that pier there? Now we've got to try and go around it, wish us luck. Easy. It's my job to navigate, trying to find the best spots and the best way to get there. Not that Steve listens to me anyway, he just goes his own way. So this is Steve taking his own way. We got stuck halfway up a little bank, so the only way of getting down there was to go backwards and take the creek to the U-boat. I only wants to go back a bit. So despite taking a few wrong turns and ending up down a few dodgy creeks, we finally made it to see the beautiful U-boat sitting there, rusting in peace.
So what you see before you is a surrendered World War I U-boat. Experts have identified this as a UB-122 due to its shorter length than the larger mine layer submarines. She carried up to three officers and 31 men. Extraordinary when you think about how cramped it must have been. It carried 10 torpedoes and a 3.46 inch deck gun. So how did it end up here? After World War I, the surrendered submarines, around 100 of them, were due to be scrapped. The engines and coning tower had already been removed, and it's thought that the engines could have been repurposed in a factory, as was the done thing. And the carcass was towed up the medway for its final journey to the scrapyard. However, for some reason, this one broke free of its towing line and drifted to its final resting place, where it's been slowly rusting away since 1921 nearly 100 years. It must have seemed like too much hard and risky work to retrieve it in that deep mud. I was curious as to why it's called a U-boat. Well, it's an anglicised version of the German term Unterseeboot. Now my German isn't very good, but even I can work out that that means undersea boat. U-boat. So here we have it, a huge relic from the First World War and a reminder for years to come of all the brave men on both sides of the conflict who risked their lives to defend their country. If you want to experience more World War One stories, be sure to watch my emotional trip to the Somme with my friends Matt and Jules, where we discover memorials to their direct relations. We also go field walking and find some amazing military ordnance that's still in abundance in those battlefields that we now call the Iron Harvest. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so, so Always wear three pairs of socks when you come out here. <laughs> oh, Jules, you've done it again. Have you got old gooey foot? foot now let's go forth and do some mudlarking. Keep your eyes peeled for any relics lost in that deep, lovely mud.
Extreme. Shout it! We're not fair weather hovercrafters. Hovercraft Extreme, baby. Peace. Stay here, everyone. Hey. Even the lens cap is dirty. Here we have some shards, probably Roman, medieval. Let's keep on looking. Charlie. Here's another view of the U boat. Hovercraft history hunting coming at ya. Through the wind and the rain, and hopefully, we'll get back alive. Stay tuned to find out. This is what it's all about. Uh, extreme! This is what it's all about. Anybody tell you you can't go out in a hovercraft in the wind and the rain? Good one for the upcycle project. Well, Steve's just shown me this. That is a beauty, Steve. What up, mate? Top nice boy. It's yours. I like that. I like it. I like it a lot. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Oh look, an old wreck.
probably an old Victorian barge. We then spot another wreck. Let's go and investigate. As we approach the wreck, we notice there's a large amount of boulders just sitting there in the mud. We suspect this may be ballast from another boat. The boat is long gone, but the ballast still remains. As Steve rightly pointed out, these trenels or trenels or trunnels, whatever you want to call them, are basically a wooden peg or dowel used to fasten pieces of wood together, especially in early timber frames and shipbuilding, meaning this boat could be quite early, maybe even post medieval or even earlier. These are lead plates and they were used to repair the underside of the boat. The timbers have rotted away and these have fallen exactly where they used to be, in situ. Oh, that's a lovely one, man. Well, as you can hear, the weather is picking up and it's getting rougher. Time to head back. Pray for us. Where are we going? Yeah, we're going to get the lad. Go to the far point, see what it's like. If it's, if it's muddy, we can go and have a look. If it's up, we just got to carry on boat. We attempted to cross a large expanse of water, but the weather had other ideas. Ben had gone first with his crew and started to take on water and couldn't steer the whole craft at all. So here he is turning back. It's quite scary to be honest. After which we hugged the coast and made a different route back. Oh, it's really coming down now guys. Uh, a bit hairy back there. Going across open water, we had to turn back and turn around and all sorts. It's pretty scary stuff, but we've still got a little way to go. But it just goes to show you, they do perform quite well in these sort of conditions. That bloody pier again. I don't know if we can go around it or maybe we can go underneath it. So we have two options, we either take it underneath the pier, but there's loads of twisted metal and things it can get caught on. Or Steve tries to take it underneath the pier on the water. The trouble is you might hit the actual pier. And this is what he decided to do. Luckily, we made it through. Mate, we all just come through that tiny little hole. Else. We ain't coming out in this sort of weather again, all right? Right. Well, no, jump in, so let's go. Jump in. Jules, a bit muddy today, mate. Just a little bit. The 
bottom half of me, I'm as muddy inside as oh. I'm outside. <laughs> I've lost my wellies, I've fallen in, I've had to crawl. Look at it. You've lost your dignity and self-respect as I've well. I've lost all my self-respect, mate, today. It's just gone. What totally you don't realise is that oh. he's not a pair of trousers, that is actually <laughs> his leg. <That's> skin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I, I like I said, I said to him on the radio. I never ever, and I said to you, I went, Steve. I'm in trouble, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. I went, I'm in trouble, mate. Right in radio, I'm, I'm, in trouble. In, I'm in trouble. I see you go out getting swamped, and I was literally went right. Oh, I'm turning red. Gordon, what's the story then, Ben? What happened out there? Tell me. I uh, just. Uh, just Let's just say my ambition far outseeded my talent. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, going on a headwind of 30 mile an hour with the wind and rain. Three up with a flagon. <laughs> oh, at least you got but a flagon. Flip side of the coin for a craft of that size. The Done capability really well. is unbelievable. Done great, yeah. Three fully grown adults, yeah. well, fully grown children. Yeah. Um, uh, to get over uh, in them conditions is, is something uh, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would challenge anybody a craft of that size to go through what that's been what that's been through today and perform the way it did. Did you manage to turn it against the wind then to get the uh... Well what we done was we just sat on the water and, and then just boated ourselves around so the wind was behind us. Yeah. And uh yeah, and then literally full power and it just it did it itself. Everybody does this phenomenon about getting over um you have to lean forward, you have to lean back. If the craft performs perfectly, you don't have to do any of that. Right. And with three fully grown children on board <laughs> to get over um like it did is something else. Amazing. Absolutely something else. Well, there we go, guys. I learned something new. Hovercraft is as uh, flexible. All weather. <laughs> all, <laughs> all types of terrain. <laughs> yeah, hovercraft survival course. <laughs> well, there you go, mud lovers. Uh, we'll see you on the next adventure. Yeah, here's to it. See you later, boy. This is how one cleans oneself after they've been muddy. You use a pair of old socks in a puddle. Get yourself nice and clean. Try. Big smile, Dad. I think you're actually getting a uh, muddier. <laughs> <laughs> Is that possible? Yeah. Some beautiful little. Uh, that's a, what it's like in the uh, in the sunlight. Well done, Kev. Top five, mate. And uh, yeah, we'll send, send 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 some photos and I'll get a closer look at that. Mm. Lovely. That's very really nice. Unusual little top to that as well. Mm. Well done. You got your flag in as well. Well, we're back at Hovercraft HQ going through our finds and we're surmising what we found here. Hiya. Loads of good finds. So, Jules is eager to tell us more about what he's found, so we'll start with you, Jules. So, we've got some first century Roman burnish ware, um, or late, maybe late, late Iron Age. This is definitely we think is Iron Age. Yeah, it maybe, be the, and maybe Bronze Age. Or, yeah, it's, it's, pinched, and it's pinched across the top. So, oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, no, that's not iron. It's, I think it's. Well, you think it's bronze? I think it's bronze age. Yeah. It's, well, it's, oh, it's very light that. as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's but the way it's, it's not. What? It's not. The material's different. Yeah, but it's rest. not thrown. Look. It's not thrown. Oh, it's yeah. Pinch, pinch, so it's pinch, yeah. pinch part. Look. Excellent. Yeah, so, so we're well, going. You can, you can even. Oh, you can actually feel where their thumbs went in there. So like, yeah, it's a very tactile piece. Mm. Sweet. And it's very early. It's very early, yeah. And it's lovely that it's scratched and decorated. And the other piece of decorated <coughs> pottery is this uh, yeah, first century burnish ware, but look at the lovely decoration on that. It's obviously like a high status piece, rather than just thrown together as like a salt pot or whatever. Yeah, so or very, very late um, Iron Age. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and you've got a base. And this, colours is, on this that. is the burnish ware that we normally find. Some nice bases, sides. I mean, you get the whole profile of the pot with that one, look. You've got the, yeah, that's you've got the base, You've almost and then got, you've the, got the, the side that would have come up. Yeah. Which, well, I think I can actually show you this. We're going to go, we're going to venture into Hovercraft HQ. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's 
there would have been something like that. Like that. Is that way up? Oh, yeah. Print? Yeah, I mean they're all individually made, didn't they? So, but yeah. yeah it's not so there's a slight yeah. size difference. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Sweet. We're gonna go with medieval on this one, I think. Medi medi. Medieval, yeah. It, it, possibly a, a lid. Lid or a or a saucer a dish. dish. I'd say a lid. Dish. No, Do you there's, know what? No... I bet you. Right, well, hang on. I've just cracked it now. I bet that's a lid for a salt pot. See when they're doing the salt possibly, out there. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, because it's so crude. It's not glazed. No, we're going Roman. Yeah, Roman, and the best, the other amazing piece of Roman which you haven't mentioned yet is this uh, beautiful piece of Samian ware. Samian ware, yeah, look at that. It's, which, uh, if you look at the detail, well, there was two types of Samian ware, weren't there? The original stuff that the Romans made, and then the English version. We sort of copied them a bit, and I think obviously the Roman stuff was a lot better. So, uh, hopefully, so this we're is not the, sure this on that, the, but we can definitely see a lion. Yeah, with his paws crossed over here in the face and we've also got somebody like a gladiator or a someone gladiator on, on horse tail a horse here uh -huh. with a spear or maybe a yeah, I'm not sure what is, it's got bits coming off of that isn't it it does, yeah. it does look like it needs a further research a flower or something isn't it yeah with the, um... cool well I think the um well, they're amazing finds anyway, but Steve's done superbly today. It's been his day today with the one and only... It's not about quantity, it's about quality. That's quality, yes. Nice rare and that is poison. a very, very yeah. rare poison bottle. Um, obviously poison being something which you didn't want to consume, so these little nobules here were to help you to feel it in the dark, so you would not mistakenly When you came down in the night it. and needed your uh, cough mixture, you didn't <laughs> confuse it with the arsenic. That's right. So yeah, it's got an it. That is what you don't want. Poisonous, not to be taken. Yes, yeah, so I think this one can go on the um, shelf of glory, hall of fame. All the beautiful light can shine through that. Oh, we did find another poison bottle as well, which is much, much, much more common, not to be taken. Ribbed on the side again, a little bluey. Yep, yeah, again, so you can feel it in the dark. And a few meagre finds from me. I, I didn't do very well today, but um, just the way it goes, isn't it? This is a Victorian linseed compound. Nice, uh, oh, it's got something on the Stockport. That's come a long way. Yeah, isn't it? K Brothers Limited, I've just noticed that as well, so that's not bad. Quite happy with that. Ink. Ink pot. This is one I'll cut down. May Davis, London. Might be able to do a bit of research on her. See what that was. Probably a beer bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a little lantern. Steve found this, I think. And we just peeked, so I'd take it out. I might try and um, see if I can put electrolysis through that and see if I can make it, yeah, bring it clean up a bit. Again. Yeah, it's going to be brass on there. Whether it will survive or not, I don't know. But yeah, if I just see that. Actually, I could put it in your brick acid, Steve. See what Don't it's touch it. I tried it on that. Oh, didn't work? No. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> and a piece of a uh, top of a pot, a Roman pot, and the same sort of uh, burnished wear as, as this. So, all in all, great day. Dried out now as well. Yeah, dried out. It was a wet, scary, windy day, but we survived. It was a it was a scary day. I'll admit to that. So, if you could like and subscribe, <laughs> and then share share the video. Yeah, we'd really appreciate it. Anyway, see yeah. you there. See you again with the Hovercraft History Hunters. All right.